Hi everybody, I'm Mike Morgan. I'm one of the Woodshop Safety Monitors and I'm going to review for you the safety procedures we ask that you follow when you're using any of our five bandsaws. The bandsaw operates on a somewhat different principle than the table saw and, and some of the other power tools in the sense that the blade is a continuous strip of metal that moves around two wheels in this direction. I'll show you the wheels in a moment. So the blade motion is downward makes it not necessary to actually hold the wood in place at all. All you have to do is feed it because the motion of the blade keeps it against the table. Anytime you open the doors or work with the adjustments to the saw, please de-energize the tool. And that means making sure that the power cord is not connected to the outlet. So now you can see the two wheels, one upper, one lower. The lower is the driven wheel connected by a belt to the motor. And the blade is this continuous piece of steel that moves all the way through. So when we turn the, the motor on, the whole system rotates such that the blade is continuously passed through your work down through a slot in the table. There are several adjustments that we do not ask you to make as a user, but rather we ask you to verify. And the first of those is the blade tension. Blade tension is verified by placing your finger against the side of the blade and pressing it outward, and it should move only a quarter to three-eighths of an inch with moderate pressure. You can also look at this gauge here. 15 refers to millimeters of blade width. That's the recommended blade tension. Don't change that, but if it doesn't read or doesn't feel quite right, either by this test or this one, please call the monitor to make that set correctly. While I've got the door open, let me just point out that the previous users didn't clean up after themselves. You can see the sawdust lying around here. This is just a gentle reminder to clean up after yourself when you're done. The other adjustments to verify require you to open the blade guard, which is this orange door here, and you'll inspect in this area where the blade is beginning, is about to pass through the table, you can see some blocks, in this case they're white plastic, that are meant to stabilize the blade left versus right. Keep it from moving too far left or right. Those are called guides. There's also a guide that you cannot see very well at the back edge of the saw to keep it from moving too far this way. The adjustment of those guys is not up to you, but you should take a look at them to make sure that they are approximately correct. Once they are, once you verify that, close the guard up again, the guard door, and lock it in place. Here's a larger version of the blade guards that I'm going to use to attempt to demonstrate for you what the proper adjustment should be. The blade is meant to pass between those two wheels such that the gullets on the blade are roughly in line with the front edge of the wheel. So here's the front edge of the wheel and here are the blade gullets. So this, the whole chassis assembly needs to be moved back and forth until they roughly line up. You need to verify that these two wheels are not quite touching the blade and they're adjusted this way so that the blade position is stable left versus right. And our, our general rule is to make them so that they're just clearing the blade. Close, but not touching. And again, you should verify that by, just by eye, but don't try to adjust it yourself. The third adjustment is of this thrust bearing here, which is meant to stabilize the blade so it doesn't move this way. It needs, again, to be adjusted so that it just clears the blade, doesn't quite touch it when things are static and so I can adjust it in this position like that. Now just to reiterate, these are not adjustments we expect you to make, but rather to confirm them. If you find any of them out of adjustment or you have any doubts about that, please ask the monitor for assistance. The monitors have been trained to make these adjustments and they should know how to make them right if you don't think they are now. So always consult the monitor if there's any question about this. There's one more adjustment you do need to make, and that is to set the height of the guard to just clear your work. So if I have an example of a piece of wood I'm going to saw on, I'm going to adjust the guard height so there's about a quarter inch space between the top of the work and the lowest point of the guard. The purpose here is to minimize the chances of your fingers coming into contact with the blade and also to maximize the stabilizing effect of those blade 
guides that I talked about, the, th the three wheels that I mentioned. Oh, by the way, I should also point out that there's another set of blade guides underneath the table here that you also need to confirm the correct adjustment of. Once again, that's not something for you to fix, but rather it's something that the monitor should be asked to help you with if that adjustment needs to be made. Having set the guard, the guard height, we're now ready to begin our cut. The table saw can be used to produce a number of different kinds of cuts. I've drawn a freehand curve here to demonstrate the ability of the table saw to cut profiles and curves. It's one of the few tools that allows you to do this quite readily. So when we place the wood on the table, we're going to try to cut around this profile to make a smooth curved cut. So at this point, we're ready to energize the tool. And the procedure is the same as other tools. Press the plug in and rotate it slightly clockwise so it's locked in place. Now the tool is energized and we are ready to go. So we pull this out. When cutting with the bandsaw, the recommended procedure is to advance the work and turn it, if you're doing a curve, simultaneously, rather than going forward, turn, forward, turn. That's not recommended. The better way to do it is to make those two motions together. I stopped in the middle of the cut to demonstrate one point, and that is whenever you have to do that, wait until the saw blade stops moving before you attempt to back it out. And on this particular saw and a few others in our shop, there's a brake that allows you to stop the, the saw motion quickly. Not all band saws come with this equipment, but this one does. So whenever you're waiting for the blade to stop, use the foot brake and you don't have to s stick around for so long. The other point that I mentioned earlier is don't try to back out with the blade moving. Wait until it's stopped before you do this. Now you might have noticed that I was not actually able to adhere to the curve as closely as I might have liked. That's a matter of practice because this blade is narrow enough, narrow enough that it should be able to follow this curve quite closely. And so I need to practice my technique in order to get a sharp turn out of that. The bandsaw can also be used to make the routine cross cuts and rip cuts that we talked about with the table saw. In the case of a rip cut, use the fence. Here's a, a, a nice bandsaw fence uh, that works in the same way as that on other tools. And this bandsaw also has a slot for a miter gauge, works the same way as that on many other saws. The one cut that the bandsaw is capable of that most other tools cannot is referred to as the resaw cut. So I said this would be a rip in this direction, this would be a cross cut in this direction because of the direction of the grain. I can cut in this direction also, not with a piece of plywood, but with a piece of solid wood, in this direction. And so with a bandsaw, I can cut thin slices off of a piece of wood oriented in this direction. Clearly I'm going to need the fence to do that, and it's going to take some careful steering of the wood to get it through, but in this case I could make what's called a veneer cut, or a, a, a resaw cut, on this piece of wood, slicing off a nice thin piece. Some people do uh, resaw cuts, and especially veneer cuts, where the veneer is between the blade and the fence. Others do it where the veneer comes off on the right side of the blade. There are equal numbers of people who favor either one. They both work equally well. The final safety consideration that I should mention is where your hands go. And the proper technique here is to keep your hands well to the side of the blade or even behind it, but never in line with the blade. So never feed your work like this, but rather keep your two hands on either side of the blade so that as you feed it through, they remain to one side of the blade or the other. In all bandsaws, it is permissible to even pull the wood through from the far side because there's no danger of kickback. Just to reiterate the safety considerations, keep your hands away from the blade. Remember to never start the saw with wood in contact with the blade. And any adjustments that are to be made within the, uh, uh, the blade guard itself should be done with the power disconnected. In general, these beasts like to be fed, but they would prefer to be fed at a gradual, steady pace rather than too fast 
or even too slow. So the, the idea, and this takes practice, is to feed your wood at a steady pace. Keep going, don't start and stop, and don't go too fast. So enjoy the bandsaw, but please remember to work with care and set a good example for anyone who is also watching you. Thanks.